烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. So, this series, the big picture, focuses on the high-level conclusions of all the materials we've gone through on this site, on this channel, over the last eight years. More than seven hundred videos. More than seventy. Different playlists of series. So why do we go through all that trouble <laughs> to present the ultimate, the most confidential, most secretive, and most powerful spiritual knowledge? Now, when the scriptures talk about certain subjects, they give a warning. That this knowledge is not to be repeated to those who are faithless, who are sinful, who are critical, skeptical, foolish, sinful, or of a negative disposition. And there are very good reasons for this, and the main reason is offenses, aparada. Arada means worship. Service, bhakti, love, appreciation of the beauty of the spiritual knowledge, and aparada means just the opposite. So, a person who is coming into contact with high-level scriptural knowledge, but has a critical or faithless attitude toward it. Is putting themselves in jeopardy. Why is that? Because <laughs> there are many、uh, very difficult, hellish situations in life, which are caused by bad karma. And the best and most efficient way to get bad karma <laughs> is to offend the scriptures, the deities, the sages, the gurus. The realized souls, the teachers. So we've seen it ourselves. Several people have come to me for instructions, but they made some offense, maybe just a very small offense.、Huh? But afterwards, we see that they're suffering, and they can't do anything about it. There's nothing they can do to get out of that suffering. Why? Because they made an offense to a realized person. We've seen people who came and made some offense, and then their whole spiritual life is put on hold, and they're just stuck. They can't move from where they are. They can't advance. Oh, and there's a lot of worse destinations than that. <laughs> of course. The sages don't take offense at those who offend them, but the powers, the the demigods,、huh? the gods, the goddesses, they certainly do. And so, a person creates very bad karma for themselves by these kinds of offenses. So, at the same time, we do want to present. The most powerful spiritual knowledge that we have access to. So, what's the solution? <laughs> We're working on a website that will have many, many courses. I think so far we have over seventy courses planned, and that will only increase over time. And these courses range from the very basic and introductory level. To the highest, most confidential secrets of spiritual life, and so what we're going to do is create some series 
not all of them, in fact, most of them will be will continue to be publicly available on this channel and also uh, easily available through the course site. We want to put as least restrictions on the knowledge as possible. But some of it is so confidential and so powerful and so difficult that it requires a person to be at a very high level before they're granted access. Now back in the old days this wasn't such a problem because to get that kind of knowledge you had to go through a master, a guru, a sage. You had to be vetted by them and if they found you qualified they would give every secret, every most confidential thing. But nowadays we're working on the internet <laughs> It's not possible to know who is coming or what their motivations are. So we have to keep some of the most confidential information unavailable, except to those who have qualified by passing the lower level courses. So that said, we have a team of volunteers working on the site, even now, uh, means software developers, web designers, instructional designers, proofreaders, translators. <laughs> I mean, we have a whole volunteer group uh, that we've assembled behind the scenes. And these people are very capable, very intelligent, and devoted. And they see the value in this knowledge. They also see the value in presenting it in a graded sequence. In other words, we don't give the most confidential secrets to the people who just walk in the door. Okay? That's not possible. Because even to understand this knowledge needs some background, some foundation, knowledge of Sanskrit. But more than that, it needs good karma, punya. Now, we live in a holy place in India, and we see every winter thousands of Westerners coming, and they're like spiritual tourists, you know. They come, and they put on long flowing clothes, and, you know, try to act cool. <laughs> but actually, we can tell they're unqualified. And why are they unqualified? Because they don't have the punya, they don't have the good karma to deserve access to the real teaching. So what happens? Some phony commercial guru get a hold of them and sell them some expensive workshops or retreats and they go off and they, for two weeks they sit and meditate or pretend to meditate and then they go home and they kind of forget all about it. <laughs> so, I'm here to tell you, the first step on the spiritual path is karma yoga. Why? Well, just look at the life of the typical person in the world today. They have to work very hard just to keep the basics of life together, isn't it? They have to put in so many hours on the job that they don't really have time or energy for spiritual growth. Well, how do you deal with that? You do karma yoga. <laughs> karma yoga, I'll give you an example from my own life. I approached a guru, my Adi guru, Srila Prabhupada, and he gave me all kinds of services to perform. I was leading kirtans, I was traveling and preaching, teaching from the Vedas, these, the scriptures, and eventually I became an editor in his publishing uh, church, really, the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. And so for several years I was editing Sanskrit and Bengali scriptures and their translations into English. And from this I mean, this service was such good karma. This was such punya. 
It was so elevating, so inspiring. And the skills that I got from it were so valuable that after Prabhupada left his body and I left the temple, I went into business. And I could make so much money from this business that I could work for a year or two and save up enough money to go to India and stay two or three years at a time. And that was my life. You can do this too, but you have to have the good karma. You have to do the karma yoga to deserve it. So, you know, a lot of people are talking about abundance, you know, as if it's something you can just wish for. Huh? Like Walt Disney, you know, when I wish upon a star, you know, come on. The real good fortune in life comes from good karma. And good karma comes from karma yoga. Karma yoga means service to the cause of the Supreme. And what is that? To bring everybody to enlightenment. <laughs> God doesn't want to see people suffer. Huh? It's the, old, the image of the old man uh, sitting up in the sky, watching everybody and sending them to hell and like that. This is not the real view of the Supreme. God is more like a father and mother who care deeply about their children. But at the same time, they give them the freedom and because they have freedom, they can also make mistakes. Hey, but making mistakes is how you learn, right? <laughs> so what God is doing is giving the instruction manual for the universe in the Vedic scriptures. And you're free to take it up or not. But all the scriptures give prescriptions for different services, mantras, offerings, pujas. Uh, this is called the um, esoteric life, okay? The, the life of artha, good fortune. See, one who becomes rich does so because they have the karma to be rich. One who has a life where they have the leisure to perform sadhana, deep meditation, traveling to the holy places, making offerings and doing ceremonies and advancing in spiritual life, does so because they have the good karma. It's not accidental. It's something they work for. It's something they deserve. So a person who has the, the uh, good fortune to take the time to have the leisure in life to do real serious spiritual work is in that position because they did so much karma yoga, they have so much good karma that they can do that. Other people who are almost like slaves are just working for their own selfish gratification. And because of that, they don't have leisure. Their life is completely controlled by the boss and by economics and by the conditions in which they find themselves. They watch the TV and actually believe what they see on the news. <laughs> you know, this is tragic. But we're giving a better solution. And pretty soon, not only are we going to have these videos publicly available on the channel, which we've had for a long time, but we're also going to have a website where you can come and get guidance and go through the different topics in the proper order so that you can get the qualification to deserve the most confidential knowledge, the most powerful Vedic, uh, like it's like a password to the universe. How can I describe it? It's like, you know, every time you log on to, to your bank on the website, you have to give your password. Why? Well, because it keeps out unauthorized people who would otherwise just take your money and waste it, you know. The same way, there are very high, powerful, confidential pujas 
and mantras and other procedures that you can do and will give you tremendous results, but you have to be qualified. Not that you're going to waste the opportunity, not that you're going to uh, simply uh, take the knowledge and misuse it or make offenses against it or neglect it, but you're really going to put it to use and make it something that leads to your liberation from the suffering, liberation from being a slave working in the material world. Uh -huh. So this is going to be available on the site, and we want to invite you all to participate and get this knowledge that leads to the highest goals. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.